Today, the first day of December 2020, a warm and hearty welcome to Business Redefined, your weekly most comprehensive look at the world of business and economics. Tonight, digital financial services. Now, official data shows that eight out of every 10 adult Kenyans own a formal financial account with the last decade having been characterized by a surge in digitization, not only in payments, but also in savings and credit. A 2019 study by Financial Sector Deepen in Kenya shows that mobile money wallets have gained significant traction in the country. An estimate estimated 54% of adults actively save on their mobile wallets. How can Kenya consolidate the gains that the digital financial solutions have accelerated in formal financial inclusion? What are the opportunities and challenges that exist in the market? And how are formal financial services players handling the question of data security? Now to unpack this and more, I am joined by Angela Murigi, the Director of Digital Finance at KCP Group. Welcome on set, Angela, if you can hear me. Clearly, this is a critical yes. area as yes. far as uh, formal financial services in Kenya are concerned. And let's just kick off by looking at the subject of SMEs. The CBK indicates that whereas there is remarkable progress being made, SMEs are still largely excluded from this. Is this the case from your perspective? Um, no, I, I don't think we can say that SMEs are excluded actually from the digital financial spaces. That's the, the formal approach to to including them in the digital financial space perhaps might not be as well defined as it is for, for the individual customer so those are some of the things we are working on at the bank at the moment um for instance if you want to onboard yourself as a small business owner and you want to be able to do that digitally you might have a problem getting a deal as quickly as you would like to you might have a problem trying to access a loan that is actually structured for a business you know the, the structuring for a loan of a business is not a 30-day loan like the way you structure for um, for an individual. For instance, when we are thinking about how we approach SMEs, we've been uh, making some changes to the way we define our loan product. Um, SMEs make up uh, about, uh, yes, like you said, the FSD reports that uh, SMEs constitute about 98% of the businesses in Kenya. They employ over 80 percent of, of our youth so there is a need for us to think about how we're going to do this okay. effectively so kcb for instance what we have done is that we have a, a a wallet offering we have called vuma and on it we are doing what we call retailer financing so all our corporate distributors we are going around and recruiting the smes who are in their value chain and offering them lending okay now uh, with retailers uh, lending, they might want weekly lending, they might want monthly lending, they might want three months, six months. So all of it, you have to figure out how you're going to be able to do this effectively in a digital space. So those are some of the things we are working on in the SME space because we really feel very strongly that even as we have done a lot of efforts for small small about uh, the Biashara clubs, the banks have, yes. the networking trips, those are now a thing of the past because it's not like you can go and uh, visit any other countries at the moment. But um, we are trying to think about how do we create that differentiation for the SME offering in the digital space. And when you talk about the differentiation of the market here, a very important point, to what extent yes. do you think cost is uh, an inhibiting factor for the micro, small and medium-sized businesses? In fact, actually, the, the fundamental thing is that the mobile uh, lending has been a lot kinder to, to borrowers than uh, some of the traditional modes of borrowing that people were able to access. If you think about uh, where the bulk of borrowing uh, for some of these people without collateral, where they were able to go, that means family, friends, Shylocks, um, the people who come and take your car uh, after a, a few few weeks late of uh, of repayments, this is where people were able to get money from before. So our interest now is to figure out how do we democratize this? How do we bring dignity to that level of borrowing? How do we uh, judge the small business owner without demanding that he must have plots of land or cash to secure the borrowing that he's taking? So for us to be able to achieve that, and, and what I have been trying to, to advise uh uh, all, all the business people that we speak to is that they must formalize their means of collecting because if the bank can see how much your business is able to draw in mm -hmm. then we can give you cash flow lending we okay. can lend you based on the cash flow you're able to bring in so and, and i mean all the way down to a kiosk level because unfortunately we'll never be able to build enough branches to reach all the people we want to reach so digital is the only way we are going to be able to do that which means People must accept cashless payments.
payments. Yes. And the more you accept cashless payments, then the more likely uh, the bank is able to see your 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 repayment capability and can trust that you can then repay the debt because we do have an obligation to collect the debt after we lend it. Absolutely, and clearly the issue of investor readiness is very critical for SMEs. But crossing over to a different subject, COVID-19 yeah. brought to, mm. to visibility the question of uh, us being a predominantly cash economy and the fact that a lot of it was being pushed into the digital uh, side. How has COVID mm. impacted the digital business uh, from where you sit? I mean, uh, from where I sit, and I think from everyone who is dealing in the digital space, it has been a... Uh, um, the, I suppose the only light in a rather dark time uh, that we have experienced recently because I know all businesses, all aspects of our lives have suffered significantly from this uh, tragic pandemic. But um, the, the growth we have seen is actually in the number of transactions uh, that are being carried out digitally and, and, and credit to, uh, to the central bank and the governor. Uh, for some of the and, and the government for some of the initiatives that they made, such as uh, zero rating, the transfer from your uh, bank account to mobile, um, uh, saying that anything below one thousand should not uh, should not actually be be charged at all. Balance inquiry was zero rated for banks, and there is no intention actually to return that cost. So we have seen actually transactions multiply a hundredfold. Um, and, and the number of onboarded customers into mobile banking. I mean, the bank has like four, over 4 million banked uh, customers, and now we have over 3 million of them uh, already on our mobile banking platform, which, believe me, is a phenomenal step since 2009. We were only able to onboard about uh, a third of our customer base yeah. for the first 10 years. Okay. So there has been quite a big difference uh, with the impact of uh, Corona, and my hope is that Kenyans will continue to do more, do more cashless payments because the benefits are, are significant. Because the more visibility the bank has on on your incomes, on the cash flows, then the more it is able to build products and innovate around that space. And when you talk about the transition now from cash into the digital uh, platforms, one of the questions I normally get is about cost. And uh, I was reading a report by FSD and CBK indicating that uh, the average cost of running a bank account is about 4,400 shillings per annum. And uh, the question is, if I was to migrate now to the digital side, how does this impact my cost saving? Well, um, depending on the type of uh, individual you are, the number of transactions you do, the nature of the transactions you do, because um, the beauty with digital is that the intention is to move uh, transactions away from needing a human being to do them for you. Human beings will need dental, you know, glasses, things like that. These things are costly. So you, 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 you know that what, when you're serving yourself, not only can you get yourself a better experience, especially if we can build very robust platforms, which we believe in KCB Bank, we have actually invested in some rather robust platforms in recent years. But uh, more importantly is your cost can significantly drop because, like I said, balance inquiry is zero. When you go to the bank and you do a transaction over the counter, the bank is obligated to charge you because it has to pay that employee that's sitting behind the counter. But when you're serving yourself and we're just talking about bandwidth, we can charge you very little. I mean, for us, for instance, to transfer money, we charge 12 shillings only on, on digital. And when you try to do um, an electronic EFT transfer, you know, an electronic funds transfer, we charge you 200 shillings. When you want an RTGS, which is what uh, mobile is, a real-time funds transfer, we will charge you 600 shillings. And, and so you can see the phenomenal and exponential drop you can achieve with digital. Right. And for uh, us, our interest is to go the volume. Yes. And uh, speaking about the issue of volumes, uh, one of the challenges that is often cited around the digital financial services is the gaps in tra pricing transparency, especially when it comes to digital loans. How would you say mm. the landscape is evolving as far as this is concerned? Oh, no, I think... Um, I think now it's very transparent. We are required uh, by the prudential guidelines, uh, by central bank regulations, to ensure that we publish everything. So if you go to any banks, any regulated institution must publish the full and total cost of everything. There are no hidden charges. They are, they are seated in the tariff guides, in the branches, um, on the websites. Um, if you text, if you do a transaction, we send you the cost of that transaction even before you do it or we advise you if you're using an app 
it flashes on the screen even more so you can make a determination whether you want to go through and finish it i mean the world is a lot more open today especially in the digital world than it used to be so essentially we should not be worried about uh, issues of uh, no. transparency <laughs> no transparency is just a requirement of digital in fact if you think about what all the innovations talk about the the blockchain stuff and uh, big data and the intent here is the more transparent you are the more trust you can build with your customers with the users and everybody in the chain the more likely you are to get adoption because uh you won't be able to explain to an individual uh you have to build that trust at scale so the only way for you to build that trust at scale is for you to to ensure that the information people are getting is accurate and complete Right, and that point by Angela takes us to a short break. Business Redefined will be back with a lot more on this subject. We are focusing on digital financial solutions, so don't touch that dial. Kunjema na tunukiwa offers kila siku. Piga star four four four. Asi utunukiwe credo double double. Baram pam turu turu baram pam turu turu baram pam turu turu turu. Dirt and germs shouldn't get in your way. Carex Hand Wash, your trusted antibacterial protection, cleans, cares, and protects you and your family for life's little adventures. Say yes to life. For an exclusive fragrance experience, try Nivea Men Deep Impact Body Lotion with a long lasting woody fragrance, deep moisture and a fresh skin feel. Make an impact with Nivea Men Deep Impact. Nivea Men, it starts with you. When the world changed, it made us go back to the simple joys and love the little things even more, like serving up your best, eating together and sharing more. Now, oh, we'll take nothing for granted and always remember to taste the simple joys. Enjoy the magic of Christmas with Coca-Cola. Ukikwama, utambia nini watu? Wambia bra, wena garago? Ay garago! Sweeter. Bra, when you gotta go, you gotta go with Neptune. Neptune, toilet paper for wherever you are. Geisha aloe vera and honey, made for the goodness of aloe vera to calm and refresh your skin. Be strong and last long. Rock plastic tips. Rock plastics are made with 100% virgin raw material. Rock plastics come with new and different unique designs. Rock Industries brings you rock plastic with a variety of kitchenware, ranging from kitchen dishes, cups, plates, cloth lined pegs, spoons, and even rulers for learners. These and more products contact our offices on 0722575619 or 0736028181. Every spoonful of Nutri comes loaded with the necessary vitamins, protein and minerals for you and your family to become healthier and stronger. Pick up a pack today from your nearest store. Nutri. Every spoonful counts.
Welcome back to Business Redefined. Tonight we are talking about digital financial solutions and on set we are privileged to have the director of the segment of KCB Group, Angela Murigi. Welcome back on set. Uh, before the break we discussed a number of issues regarding the cost and what have you. Let's cross over to the fact that uh, official data indicates that about 11% of Kenya's adult population is still excluded as far as formal financial services are concerned. What can we do to reach out to this segment? Okay, um, now uh, profile of this even person. Um, even though we 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 are we're going to make every effort to include this segment, we know that it's a bit of the older generation. You know how the digital world is divided into digital natives. That would be our children who are born thinking computers were always there, and then uh, there would be the adopters. That would be the rest of us who then understood when uh, it became uh, natural for us to do everything on digital. Um, such as us trying to do a, a TV interview in this manner. So the, the, the thing is that I doubt that uh, as we go with generations, there will be any shift towards rolling back adoption of technology, but it will only get more intense as you go. So I believe the fundamental problem of why the 11% has yet to onboard, and it did take some time even for large products like Empesa to gain wide adoption. There are tipping points for almost everything, but it is almost impossible unless someone has a real need to use for them at a certain age to agree to adopt. So I think it's just a question of generations. So we might not be able to get everybody perhaps today. When I looked at those statistics that Central Bank had produced, it said around uh, people over 45, uh, there was a, a, a much lower incidence of adoption uh, than the younger generation, which of course is to be expected. But then what are the products we are building that creates this as a need in their lives? So for instance, we I, I looked at how India has approached driving cashless and Modi has done uh, quite an interesting job of driving uh, cashless such as uh, passing laws uh, giving uh, discounts across uh, platforms like transport retail sector uh, cashbacks and so on to drive people to actually adopt cashless transactions if we can get there if it can become a way of life for us if we can uh, formalize our transport systems, if we can figure out how to harmonize urban centers and rural centers so that we sort of harmonize the standard of living. Um, and that means uh, the same needs exist across different areas geographically, then you will get that adoption to shift. So I believe this is just a question of time. Uh, and perhaps it might be generational, um, but it also means that there is an effort to be made from a policy standpoint, from a government standpoint, from an infrastructure standpoint, from what the government can do and what large institutions like ours can do to try and change uh, the lives of the people in Eastern Africa. Angela, the naysayers will tell you that part of the reason why the adoption within some demographics is a bit slow is because of concerns around data security, especially when you do your transactions mm -hmm. online on digital platforms, what that means as far as your data mm -hmm. security is concerned. When you look at the end-to-end -end value chain of digital transactions, how safe would you say uh, one's data is? You know, the, 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 the liability actually sta uh, sits with uh, the institution that is uh, providing you the service. So believe me, we have made great strides and driven a lot of, uh, of, of, of uh, data security plat in, in our platforms. The, usually, today, we don't find that the, the, the fault lies so much within the institution as with what we call social engineering. This is where... People send you a text and tell you that a KCB and PESA soft loan is available at 0.5%. You're getting this text from a number that is not even tagged as KCB or KCB and PESA or Safaricom for that matter. And yet you believe. You go ahead and you dial that number. Uh, they send you to, they get you to MPESA them some money and uh, then you lose money. This is what we call social engineering. Or someone calls and claims to be from the bank and then asks you for the PIN. The bank sends innumerable fixed texts every month. We have a fixed schedule of telling our customers, we will never call you to ask for your SMS, for your PIN number, or for any information on the phone or on email. Um, but this still is something that is taking time for wide adoption. But, you know, interviews like this actually change and maybe disseminate the information just as quickly. So we try as much as possible to teach uh, people, um, you are your own best security. Do not share your PINs. Do not... Uh, trust people who send you random SMSs. There's a lot of um, the, the, the 
outgoing president of the U.S. has a point when he calls some of these things fake news. Um, and it is fake news when someone says that uh, you, uh, there's a, a random number that has sent you money and you believe and then you, you try to return the money. But I, I, I know fraudsters will exist, but it yeah. is our obligation as the users of these technologies to understand sometimes how they work and how to protect ourselves. Angela, there's a lot of feedback online with questions around the interest rates charged by mobile uh, digital credit lenders, if I could call them. Uh, as a key industry player, mm. what are your thoughts on this? Not necessarily around, <laughs> to say that KCB is under this ambit, but really, what are your thoughts around this? Well, there's all kinds. You know, it's willing buyer, willing seller. Credit is actually not something that is... Um, uh, regulated unless you're really regulated by the central bank, for instance, like a commercial bank is. So there are fintechs, there are smaller organizations that are allowed to place these loans out there in the world and can sell them at the price uh, that they were their the buyer is willing to buy it. So um, what I always tell people is that keep your credit uh, clean with the formal institutions, and you will find that you're then being charged a fair price. Um, because unfortunately, uh, pricing is based on risk. So if the only thing I know about you is your ID, then the price you might get is not as good as the person who has walked into the bank branch and registered with the bank and I have an account with them and I'm able to see their salary. I give them a much lower monthly interest rate for digital lending than I would someone who the only information I have on them is an ID. And I, I, I'm not saying the fintechs are even doing it wrong to put it this way, but they must protect themselves because they have no real way of determining repayment capability based on the KYC they are holding. KYC okay. is you know your customer information. You know, how much information do I have of you? Do I have your ID? Do I have your ID? What, how to earn? I don't know. They're very really low I get paid. Okay. And I, I think the issue that you're driving there this is, is about the pricing. Mm -hmm. risk pricing clearly is a key uh, question there. As we wind up the conversation, really, um, analysts of digital finance will tell you that it's not just about the scale and access, it's about the quality that you offer by way of diversity of products. So whether it's savings, credit, etc. What do you think is the next frontier for Kenya? Granted, by global standards, we are quite ahead of the pack. Yes. Uh, well, we say we are quite ahead of the pack because we think of ourselves as a... Uh, um, big adopters of digital because of M-Pesa, uh, but there is a ways to go. I don't know how many of us realize we don't make most of our small payments in cash still. Um, that we, we the, the next frontier really is to conquer the space of payments because payments, unless they are substantive amounts, are still made in cash. You go to your local kiosk, you pay in cash. You go to the, um, the market, you, pay, you buy in cash. Uh, you go into a matatu, you pay in cash. A, a lot of the things in our lives um, are, are done in cash everyday living small payments this is what we need to conquer next and um and actually i would like to take a moment to just encourage uh people who are very keen in this space to actually join the nairobi online city there is a um, uh, um, uh, uh, singapore fin fintech festival that's being run by central bank nairobi has an online city from the 7th to 11th of december uh, and if you can look it up, the central bank has actually put something very interesting together and we'll be having uh, global talks from everywhere in the world. Uh, we will be participating as KCB. And some of these are the issues we will be tackling in that space. What are the, the innovations that should be driven in this space? What, what are they doing in Singapore, in India, in China? Um, and you can see all that if you log in and have a look and listen. And uh, there is a lot to be learned. And Kenya, we have that made great strides, but there is still quite a way to go. Right, and uh, unfortunately, because of time, that's why we have to close it with uh, Angela Murigi with her thoughts on digital financial services. Let's cross over to the Markets Review.